<clears throat> Hello there. I'd say, oh my god, hey, but I literally don't know how to make Winnie the Pooh say, oh my god, hey, like it just doesn't compute in my brain. Oh my god, hey, welcome back to my stagey YouTube channel. If you are meeting me for the first time, then hello there. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. It wasn't as good the second time. It wasn't as good. I am a professional theatre critic here in the UK and a content creator here on YouTube where I review the shows that I have been invited to go and see, both in London's West End around the UK and recently on Broadway. If you would like to see some more of the reviews that I have made of these shows, then make sure to subscribe to my stagey YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking to you all about the new stage adaptation of Disney's Winnie the Pooh, currently playing at the Riverside Studios until the 21st of May in West London before it embarks on a nationwide tour. This production started its life in the US and is predictably going on to conquer the world because who doesn't love Winnie the Pooh? Full disclosure, I am not only a massive theater nerd, but also a big lover of Disney. You can see the Mickey Mouse ears behind me, as well as the fluffy friends currently sitting on the sofa. So you may have some inclination as to where this review is going, but I'm going to give you my professional dramaturgical view of this show. And hopefully I'm going to answer the questions that you might have about it. So what is it actually about? How does it work? What does it look like on stage? And can it be enjoyed by theatergoers of all ages or is it just for kids? We're going to address that all in today's video. If you enjoy this one, make sure you subscribe to my channel. You can go find me on other social media platforms. I'm at Mickey Joe Theatre on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you want to see all of the content I make here on YouTube, as well as some exclusive videos, you can sign up to become a channel member in the description down below. Now, let's talk about Winnie the Pooh. I have been to see this show at Riverside Studios already twice. The first time I was invited by the PR team to go and see the show, and the second time I just bought tickets because it fitted in well with what we were doing that day. But the show itself is just over an hour long. I would describe it as a musical. It says the new musical stage adaptation because it features songs, both pre-recorded and sung by the performers on stage as the characters, but it's not like a full all singing, all dancing musical. It's more like most adaptations of Winnie the Pooh that you might see where a occasionally there will be a delightful song. In terms of how the show actually works, it uses puppetry to bring the Hundred Acre Wood characters to life. If you want to know specifically which characters will feature, it's everyone you might expect. You will meet Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Kanga and Roo, Eeyore, Rabbit and Tigger. Yes, Tigger does feature in this as well as Owl. Gopher, however, is not present, he's not in the book, and there is nary a heffalump to be seen. And last but not least, Christopher Robin also appears in the show as played by a child actor. And for all of the animal characters that I have just mentioned, they are brought to life using puppets. But you can see the performers who are puppeteering these. If we think of two different styles of puppetry, as in the Muppets and Sesame Street where you don't see the performers, or Avenue Q in which you do, this is more the Avenue Q style of puppetry. But the puppets are so well constructed, so character full, so familiar of the Disney cartoons while still being distinct enough to be their own original designs that your eye is always drawn to them and you don't spend too much time really watching the performer. It works exactly how it should. That isn't to say that a tremendous amount of creativity and artistry hasn't been put into clothing these performers, because as well as utilizing the puppets, they have their own costumes when they're playing those different characters as well. They are subtle costumes in shades of blues and greens. They have dungarees and they have hats like the one I'm wearing right now, but there are little details in those costumes that tie in with the characters that they're portraying, which I think is very sweet. And it's details like that that show you what a sophisticated piece of theater this actually is. It is not just a show for children. In terms of the plot and what happens in this one hour of theater, we are introduced to all of these characters and they encounter a plot that sort of brings in different elements from all sorts of Winnie the Pooh stories. He is looking for honey the entire time and he tries to get some honey out of the tree when he notices bees. We have the changing of the seasons. We have Tigger bouncing around and destroying Rabbit's garden. Like it's all of the hallmarks of your classic Winnie the Pooh story. They experience a blustery day. They go to Owl for advice about stuff. Eeyore searches for his house. Piglet experiences a crisis of confidence. It's everything that you would expect to happen. 
And it's the familiarity of this show that makes it so lovely. It really just plays on the nostalgia of it all. And it's going to be magical and wondrous for all of the children experiencing Winnie the Pooh for the first time at that performance. But I think it hits on an even deeper level for people who will have this nostalgia for those characters for wherever you experienced Winnie the Pooh for the first time, whether it was in the original cartoons, whether it was in the books, whether it's been in a subsequent cartoon adaptation. If Winnie the Pooh means something to you whatsoever, then I think there's a lot for you to love about this production. So I speak about this show with a tremendous fondness. There was no way that this wasn't going to have my heart when it came to the UK, because it's everything that I love in a show. However, if I really look at this with my dramaturgical hat on through a critical lens, then there are some things that I could say about it. I still think it's a very well put together production and it's a wonderful piece of family theatre that does so many things very well. It is a four star piece of theatre from me. I'm gonna tell you what I really love about it and a couple of areas where I think it could be improved. So I spoke a little bit before about the design. I'm gonna tell you who did the costume design specifically because I think it is fantastic. Every time I go, I notice new details about the costuming. The actor, whoever is playing Winnie the Pooh at that performance has a hat just like this one, but Tigger has a similar hat that is like inspired by Jughead from Archie Comics, where it's got the little crown thing pointing at Tigger's playfulness. There is one actor, and I'll speak more about the performances and how this cast rotation works, but there's one actor who plays Owl, Rabbit, and Eeyore in each performance, and so there are elements on that costume that are assigned to each of those characters, even though he's playing three different characters. There's little parts of that one costume that will speak to those. So the costumes have been designed by Lindsay McWilliams, and the idea is that everyone is kind of dressed like they are a painter, because they are the painters of Christopher Robin's imagination, which I think is lovely. I also really like the set design. I feel like it could be a little bit fuller. It's a static set. I feel like it could do a couple more magical things, but I do really love what happens when the seasons change. We get a drop of leaves from above over the audience. That's very magical. All of the kids are trying to pick up all the leaves. It's very special. And they do a similar thing with snow coming down. I feel like a lot of my criticisms arise from the fact that I would love for this to just be fuller, but for this to be children's theatre that works for like really young ages at some performances, I think it has to have a certain amount of softness in its approach. So I get that and I appreciate that. It does describe itself as a musical. I think a lot of the songs are sort of incidental from the first time I saw it to the second. When I saw it the second time and those songs started, I'd forgotten that they were actually in the show because the songs are not hugely impactful. I really like the one that Tigger does that's not the wonderful thing about Tiggers. It's the song that he sings about the super duper whoop de duper alley ooper bounce. I've mangled the lyrics, but it's something along those lines. They're all very charming and they work very well in the moment. I just feel like there are a couple more songs from the Winnie the Pooh oeuvre that I would love to be used on stage. I really love the theme from the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh in the 90s. And if there was a way of them including that, or just like something with a similar kind of energy. But at the same time, I get that you want that kind of slightly more classic, like deep in the hundred acre wood, like that's what a lot of people associate with Winnie the Pooh. So you have to bring that kind of style as well. Maybe they should do a mega mix at the end. I'm petitioning for a Winnie the Pooh mega mix. I think, I think that's a great idea. Go, go, Pooh. Are you ready? Piglet, here we go. A couple more thoughts that I have. I like the plot again, it's very ineffectual and it just has a way of bringing us into all these little scenarios. It's cleverly constructed in a way that allows the actor playing Winnie the Pooh to be off stage for a decent amount of time in the middle because otherwise it would be a very long stint for them on stage. And because these puppets are so big and so heavy, they are literally harnessed to them. And I think it's a great physical challenge to actually operate them while performing as well. I say a decent amount of time, it's probably about 10 minutes that the Winnie the Pooh actor spends being off stage while the other characters are trying to help Pooh out of a sticky situation. I will say a hallmark of the classic Winnie the Pooh stories is that we go to these sad places and then we are lifted out of them. I still cry just thinking about the Winnie the Pooh cartoon episode where Piglet ends up giving Eeyore his house because Eeyore has lost his house and there's a whole confusion around them finding Piglet's house and thinking that it's Eeyore's and Piglet doesn't want to say anything and then Winnie the Pooh says that Piglet can live with him and like we go to those places and there are moments in the original stories that are a little bit darker but then we come out of them and I think 
this is something uh, that you notice a lot in children's media and in children's cartoons. We encounter those sad and those slightly more tense situations in order to learn important lessons about them, to learn about growing up and to learn about having to leave things behind. There's not really a lot of that present here. It is more just consistent levity. Which again, they've made a choice to keep everything light, that's just how they want to do it. I will say, if I'm being super dramaturgical, I feel like they could still weave a just consistently happy plot with a little bit more substance to it, because the plot throughout, the through line of this, is that Winnie the Pooh spends the whole show looking for honey. And needing honey is not a plot, it is an impetus. Like, it's not necessarily enough to shape a hugely rewarding narrative around. From that standpoint, there are moments of the show where you are aware that you are watching theatre designed for children. And I just think children would actually still enjoy a slightly more classic Winnie the Pooh plot just as much if it had the slightest bit more depth to it, and then the adult theatre goers would have slightly more to take away from the experience as well. Let me tell you about some of the wonderfully talented cast members that I have seen in this show. So the way that the show is cast is they have a whole bunch of performers who rotate around. And I think there are three performers who will share the role of Winnie the Pooh, principally. There are three other performers who between them will share the roles of Piglet, Kanga and Roo. And there are another few performers who will rotate between Tigger and the track that covers Eeyore, Rabbit and Owl. When they're not playing those characters, they're also on stage moving things around, puppeteering kites and leaves and moving set pieces and doing all of that kind of magical stuff. So I was lucky enough to see Jake Basil play Winnie the Pooh. He came over with the production from the US and he is a utter master of his craft. You just completely believe that you're hearing Winnie the Pooh when he is speaking. I know that he has studied the voice of Winnie the Pooh in such depth, but his approach to puppetry is also so characterful and he infuses is Winnie the Pooh with such life. I was lucky enough to be able to spend some time with the cast for a promotional event prior to seeing the show for the first time and his instincts with the material and how he can just create dialogue that sounds so natural coming out of Winnie the Pooh's mouth are wonderful and very impressive. Jake has now returned to the US, but the second time I saw the show, I got to see the equally talented Benjamin Durham, who was just wonderful. His Winnie the Pooh voice is slightly different to Jake's, but sounds just as authentic somehow. And moments into the show, you forget that you're watching a performer at all and you are just there with Winnie the Pooh. Just like Jake did, he captures Winnie the Pooh's hugely endearing, like low energy physicality. And he just creates such a lovable character on stage, which is exactly what he has to do. I've seen Alex Cardle playing Tigger twice now, and the voice is spot on, singing in the voice is spot on, which is not an easy feat to do, and bouncing around with this puppet. So impressive, so impressive. He captures the slightly obnoxious and stubborn energy of Tigger very, very well. At both performances, Harry Boyd has been a standout for me because he plays, like I said, Eeyore and Owl and Rabbit. The versatility of the voice, of the characterizations, wonderful. His Eeyore in particular, I just fall in love with every single time. Eeyore's a little bit different in this version of the show, again, because they don't want to touch on the sadness and the slight hint at melancholy too much. So Eeyore, who is known for being a little bit sad, is just this slight bit more optimistic. He still sounds the same way, but when we first meet him, he is somewhat ironically talking about how much he cheers people up and he smiles out twice to the audience. And the way that he puppeteers these head turn smiles are genuinely one of my favorite parts of the show. I've seen both Lottie Grogan and Chloe Gentles as Piglet and in the other onstage track as Kanga and both of them utterly wonderful. I like seeing these different performers in these roles because you can see the way they interpret them slightly differently. But in particular, Piglet, who is probably my favorite Winnie the Pooh character, they both bring such quintessential Pigletness to their performances. Even from their first entrance, when Piglet is flying around the stage being pulled by this kite string, or later in the show when Piglet is sledding down a snowy hill, which is very challenging to portray on a stage, but they do it very, very well. The energy is so spot on.
So I do want to answer a few questions about what the theatre going experience is like. Like I said, this is an hour long show or just over an hour. Both times I've seen an 11 a.m. performance. So there were a lot of very young children in the audience. And that for me actually made it really special, getting to hear them reacting to everything that was happening. It just reminded you what the show was about and it readily reminded you of your own childhood experience encountering Winnie the Pooh for the first time. At the Riverside Studios they have a whole gift shop set up. As you can see they are selling plush toys, they're also selling t-shirt in adult and child sizes, they are selling tote bags. In lieu of programs we have this Winnie the Pooh storybook which I will say is just lovely. It has creative team information in there, it has the whole plot of the show transcribed as a story, it has some beautiful illustrations and much more exciting information in there as well. At the Riverside Studios, there was also a buggy park set up if you are bringing buggies, but I dare say this is going to change at every touring venue that the show will visit. So it's worth getting in touch with them directly if you have any questions about that. Both times I saw the show, there were a lot of parents and children having to duck out in the middle of the show and then coming back. And this was fine. They were allowed to be readmitted and it wasn't too distracting. Because this is theater designed with children in mind, the whole thing is relaxed to a certain certain extent. And finally, you do get to meet the characters. There is a special block of seating that costs a little bit more, and if you buy tickets within that section, then you get to meet the characters on stage afterwards. That's how they're doing it in London, at least. I'm not 100% sure how that's being managed at touring venues. But those have been my thoughts about the Winnie the Pooh musical. If you have any other questions at all, please let me know in the comments section down below. If you want to see a little bit more what the puppets look like, there are a few videos that feature them already on my channel. There was a whole day out that happened in the real life 100 acre wood aka Ashdown Forest that I got to go on. You can look at that video, it was maybe the best day of my life. And my trips to see the show at the Riverside Studios were also vlogged for my weekly vlog series, Oh My God Hey. Thank you so much for watching today's video, I hope that you have enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stagey YouTube channel for plenty more videos and more reviews coming very soon. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a Stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>